Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a Beetlejuice dress that I have made using the McCall's Nightfell Herbalist. And this is going to be a project that I am calling my Monstrous March project because it is a monstrous project and it is a monster basically. So I just wanted to give myself a theme so that way I have something to focus on for the month. I do have project blogs for this tutorial in case you want to see some behind the scenes. I have a two-parter vlog that I will link down below for you so you can check those out and see my progress and my process and my little mishaps that go on while making my tutorials. I also do have little tidbits and information in there that I never have enough time to insert in my tutorials. So it might be a good idea to check those out if you're going to be undertaking this dress. But otherwise, let's go ahead and get down to the nitty gritty. I am doing this dress in a size 18. And although it doesn't have a lot of pieces, it does have a lot of components as far as notions and trims. So I did make a list lining out what each of the sections is and what fabrics I'm using for it so you have an idea of how much you're going to need of each. It was very confusing to figure out which one was contrast A, what was lining B, what was petticoat C. So I wrote it all out so hopefully it's a little more understandable this way. You can see what fabrics are meant for what and they didn't list out the measurements of the trims so I did put out how much of each trim that I use so you know for yourself in case you're going to be adding trims to yours as well. Go ahead and cut out all of your pieces, mark your dots and your notches like usual. If you're using cotton like I am, make sure that you pre-wash, very important and then we can go ahead and get started. Starting off with my front and side front underlining pieces, I'm gonna go ahead and mark my placement lines. So I've already placed my dots, I'm just gonna connect the dots now. So that way it made it a little easier to line out. Taking my boning, I'm going to lay this onto each placement line using the dots to measure each piece out and I'm gonna cut a section of boning for each placement line. Grabbing my iron, I'm going to iron these so that way they lay flat to get rid of that curve that they have. So I'm just gonna go over it a little bit and it will begin to lay flat. So I'm gonna do this to each of my pieces. I'm gonna take another boning piece and this is gonna go right in the middle. So first I'm gonna start measuring from the very top edge to the very bottom edge, right down the middle of my front piece. And then you're gonna take away one and three fourth inches to accommodate for seam allowances. So I'm gonna iron this one flat as well. Grabbing some pliers, I'm gonna pull out the plastic boning piece in the middle and we're gonna soften up the ends so that they don't end up poking through after wear. So I'm gonna grab some scissors and I'm just gonna kinda cut a curve into this as best as I can, just a little curve. And then I will take just a cheap little nail file and I'm gonna go and file it down till it's a nice smooth curve. And I'm gonna do this to both ends. Do this to each of your piece of boning. We're gonna sew down the fabric channel on the placement line. So I'm gonna line up the center of my channel with the placement line and I will pin this all the way down to hold it in place. And I will do this to all of my boning channels. The center one, I will just follow the center fold. 
Make sure to have your 5 8 inch seam allowance on the top and bottom. Now to sew these down, we're gonna sew along the length of both sides and you wanna stitch right between the stitching and the edge. Make sure that you don't go into the center at all because then you'll have trouble putting your plastic bony piece back in. So this is what you'll have. I'm gonna grab my plastic boning and I'm gonna stick that back inside of each channel. I'm gonna flip all of my pieces right side up. Taking my front lining piece, now this is a pattern piece only because I cut out my piece upside down. So this is now a lining piece. But we want our underlining piece face up and you want your lining piece face up. And then you're gonna pin all the sides together. Do the same to your side front pieces, placing your lining side face up and your underlining face up, pinning all the edges. So this is what it'll look like. Then you're going to base stitch all the sides together so that it becomes one piece at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. We're gonna lay the side front pieces with the front piece right sides together, pinning down that long edge, and then do the same to the opposite side. Sew these sides at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Take your scissors and you're going to cut off half of the seam allowances that we just sewed. Now on mine, we're supposed to open up this seam allowance and iron it open and then place another boning channel right in the middle. But as you can see here, my seam is right along my last boning channel and they are gonna overlap if I end up doing that and we don't want that because that's not gonna work. So I ended up problem solving this by just keeping the seam allowances closed and I'm just gonna iron them to the side toward the center front and then place the edge of my channel along the seam right in between the other two boning and that seemed to work just fine so same thing on the other side i will just face the seam allowance toward the center front so now i'm ironing it to hold it all in place and then i'm going to take a piece of boning measure from top to bottom and then take away one and three fourth inches and you're gonna need two of these pieces. Iron your boning pieces flat and then once again you're gonna repeat the process by removing the plastic, curving out the ends filing them down so they're smooth. We will place the channel down the seam on each side. Sew these on along both sides. Reinsert your plastic boning. Take your front fabric piece and then your side fabric pieces and we're gonna lay these right sides together, matching up those long ends. Sew these on at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Trim off half of your seam allowance.
iron the seams toward the center front. Lay your lining and your fabric section right sides together, matching up that bottom edge, pinning it together. I did pin up the side here, but I take those out in a minute, realizing we're not doing that side yet. Sew this bottom edge at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Now along this bottom seam, we're gonna place in some clips to help this edge smooth out when we turn it out later. So I'm just clipping into the seam allowance as up close to that seam that we made, but you wanna make sure not to cut past that seam. So just right before, and I'm just gonna go along every inch or so, placing a clip into the curves. Cut off half of this seam allowance. Turn this right side out. And you can use a chopstick or a pencil to help those edges at that point turn out easier. Once it's all turned out, even out the edges and we're gonna press this all in place. Now we're gonna go to the sides and we're gonna pin this together, the top open edge together, and the opposite side together. Base stitch these three sides at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Taking my single fold bias tape, I'm gonna open up one side and I will lightly press this out. So it doesn't need to be extremely flat, we just wanna make sure that the side stays out while we work with it. The top edge of our bodice, we're going to line up that folded edge of the bias with that seam allowance that we made. So you wanna line it up as best you can right on top and pin it in place. And you're gonna go along the whole top edge here. Now I did pin this originally to the wrong side. You wanna pin this to the right side of your bodice, not the lining. Sew over that 5 8 inch seam allowance, sewing this together. Cut off the seam allowance right up against that bias tape edge. Then we're gonna fold the bias tape up and over to the other side, making sure it's nice and tight, and you're gonna pin it in place. So take your time doing this. The bias tape should maneuver around the fabric and the curves and everything and fit perfectly. It's just gonna take a minute to adjust the bias tape to go along with the edge of the fabric. But go ahead and do this all the way across. Slip stitch this down, and then also stitch across the ends to hold them in place. Taking your number three bodice side back underlining pieces, we're gonna add our boning to these placement lines as well. So remember, you're just gonna measure them out for each placement line, iron them flat, pull out your plastic boning, Curve off the ends, file them down. Sew on your boning channels onto the placement lines. Reinsert your plastic boning. And then turn these right side up. And we're gonna take our bodice side back lining pieces 
laying them once again right side up as well, pinning them together on all sides. Do your 5 8 inch base stitch to make this into one piece each. Open up your number four bodice back under lining pieces and we're just going to lay our bodice back lining pieces on top, right side face up. Pin up all these sides. And then you'll 5 8 inch base stitch these together into one piece each as well. Taking our number four bodice side back fabric pieces and the number four bodice back fabric piece, you're gonna line up the long straight edge, pinning it together. Do this to both sides. Sew these at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Grab your lining pieces for your bodice side back and same thing in your bodice back pieces. We're gonna line up that long straight edge and pin them together. Sew this at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Cut off half of the seam allowance on all four pieces. Iron your seams to one side. And then here I'm doing it on the fabric, but you actually want to do this on the lining. And on that short sided edge, you want to fold it over 5 8 inches and iron it down. So you can see here I'm correcting myself and doing it on the lining instead. But I realized this much later, which is why it's already attached to the whole bodice, as you can see. So we're going to take the lining and we're going to do wrong sides together and we're going to pin up the center back, the neckline edge and the shoulder edge. Base stitch these together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Grabbing our bodice front fabric pieces. We're going to take our bodice front underlining pieces, laying them wrong sides together. Pin up all the edges. Do a 5 8 inch base stitch, creating one piece. You also want to do a base stitch along the dart lines. We're going to fold our darts by grabbing our inner dot and connecting the outer two dots together to create a little triangle. And here we're going to pin this together and do this to both of your pieces. Sew along this seam. Cut off the rest of the dart, leaving about a fourth of an inch seam allowance. Iron these seams open. Taking the top shoulder edge, pin it with your bodice back pieces with right sides together. Sew this at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Cut off half of the seam allowance. Taking the bodice front lining pieces, once again you're going to pin up your darts on both. Sew your darts, cut off the excess fabric of your dart, leaving the 1 4 inch seam allowance. Iron open these seams.
Taking the back facing, we're going to finish the bottom edge. So you can do this by serging it or you can just do a zigzag stitch. It's up to you, but basically you just wanna finish this bottom lower edge to keep it from fraying. And then I will match the shoulder seam of the lining with that shoulder seam on the back facing. It should be that smaller straight edge. Sew these together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Cut off half of the seam. Iron your seam allowances to one side. Take your lining, laying it right sides together with your bodice front section. Matching that long curved edge, that smaller circle edge, all the way up to that small rectangular corner. A little hard to describe, but hopefully you can see which part I'm working on. Sew this with a 5 8 inch base stitch. Along the curves in that seam, we're gonna place some clips, and instead of a clip, we're gonna just cut out little triangles. So essentially, it's doing the same thing. We're just taking away a little more fabric this way, since it's a little bulkier than the last one. So you're just gonna make little triangles, making sure not to cut past the seam about every inch or so apart along the curves. Cut off half of the seam allowance. Once again, getting rid of excess bulk. Turn this right side out. And you can use something pointy to poke out that small rounded edge. Once your edges are neatly folded out, press them all in place. Going to that shorter open edge, we're gonna pin this together on both sides. Do a 5 8 inch base stitch. Taking my front piece now with your right side face up, we're gonna take the jacket bodice, matching that short edge along the short edge of the front bodice. So you're gonna look for those notches that you've made and match those up. So you should have overhang of fabric on both sides and you're gonna pin this together, matching those raw edges. It should be wrong side to right side. Sew this together with a 5 8 inch base stitch. So you should see we have our front forming now. Bring the back of the jacket over top and once again, we're gonna line up that short side edge, matching it with the front, pinning these together on both sides. Sew these at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Cut off half of the seam. Iron the seam toward the back of your bodice. Now take the lining and place it over that folded seam allowance, lining up the folded edges and pin them together. So your seam allowances should be sandwiched between your lining and the bodice front now to give you a really nice finished edge. Pin up the bottom edge on both sides. Slip stitch the sides of the bodice closed and then do a 5 8 inch base stitch on the bottom edges. Taking the skirt piece and where that notch is, I'm gonna do a two to three inch stay stitch at a 5 8 inch seam allowance, just around that notch and dot. With right sides together, line up the center back edge and pin it up from the dot to the bottom. Sew 
sew this together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance, stopping at the dot that you've marked. You're gonna make a clip where that dot is marked into the seam, making sure not to cut past your seam allowance. Iron the bottom seam allowance open. Do the same thing to your lining pieces. So we have two identical skirt pieces. With right sides together, match your lining to your skirt, pinning up all around that outside edge. Sew this outside edge with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Then cut off half of the seam all the way around. Turn your skirt right side out. Turn out the edges as neatly as you can. And then we will press it all in place. At the top edge of your skirt, we're gonna pin it together all the way across on both sides. Sew so a gathering base stitch along this top edge, making sure to stop an inch before that zipper opening. With my bodice face up, I'm gonna lay my skirt right sides together, upside down, so that the raw edges at the top edge of the skirt match that raw edge at the bottom of the bodice. Now we're gonna match your right side to your left side, basically so that we're sewing this on correctly. Start gathering up the skirt to match that bottom edge of the bodice. You can start by matching the dots that are marked and the edges. And then continue to pull up the gathers till it evenly fits that bottom edge of the bodice. Distribute your gathers evenly and once you're happy with the placement of all of your gathers, pin it all in place. Then we're gonna flip this to the other side so that your left side matches your right side now. And you're gonna do the same thing to this side. Sew these together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. We're gonna sew another 1 4 inch from the seam allowance we just sewed and finish this edge. So I'm just gonna use my serger to do this, but you can zigzag stitch or you can just cut it right up to that 1 4 inch seam allowance. Iron these seams up toward the bodice. That little inner corner there, you're going to slip stitch to the middle bodice just to keep it from opening up. And I'm gonna call this the end of part one for my Beetlejuice dress. This is a really long tutorial, so I wanna make sure that we don't have too much going on in one video. Otherwise, it will be a million years long and we don't want that. But I will come back and finish up the zipper and the sleeves for the jacket as well as the skirt and attached petticoat in the part two. So make sure that your notification bell is on so that that way you get notified when part two does go live. But otherwise, I hope you really enjoy this tutorial and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.